back in the book of Revelations tonight, and I've tried to draw a picture in my mind today and this week. How many of us could really picture a heavenly chorus, a heavenly choir of 144,000? And uh, I know we, we covered this last week. But as you begin to look at this, and I, I begin to look at this, have a smaller scale than this right here. But as, as we begin to look at this, and look, look at this chapter as it begins to unfold, this heavenly, this heavenly choir, just think about this. And you think about this right here as it begins to unfold as these, these messengers. Now Satan has already dropped, already lost all of his power. God has already taken all of this out. And the 144,000, they are sealed. They're sealed. All right, and God is already, and you can go to the 25th chapter, and we're going to go there of uh, Jeremiah in just a minute, a little bit. But uh, God had already promised this thing. And uh, to where it's going to be. And, uh, and uh, the Mount Zion is the city of Jerusalem. And folks, I want you to understand something tonight. The Lamb is going to take this godly seat. And the 144,000 that have come through, they come through, I believe every one of them, they, they come through this you say, well, I don't, I don't believe they come through the great tribulation. I don't believe they come through it. I believe they did. I believe they come through this, and I believe they were sealed. And I believe the Lamb came with them. And I'm on, I'm on a, we're going to get to it. And uh, you say, well, I don't believe it. I believe I can prove you wrong. I believe I can before we leave here tonight. But when we, when we begin to look at this, I want you to see a harvest. I want you to see a harvest right here. I want you to see how this is going to come true right here when the reaper comes in as this picture begins to take place right here. Because this right here is past. This year is over with, folks. This, this, is, this is behind us. This is behind. And you think about all of the folks that's going to die lost without God. And this week, have you, have you ever lost your temper? How many of you can really be honest? Now, boy, I'll tell you this, last week, there were four men, four men, they cussed me on a regular basis. Just on a regular basis. Every day. I was trying to get some work done on an automobile. It was God's name in vain. It was other. Not, oh, it was it was ungodly. And I would just turn it off, and I would try to talk, and I would try. You can. And I, I can only God knows. But you can take so much, right? 
you can, Brother Fred, you can just take so much. Monday morning, I went into the place of business. I mean, I'm just going to come clean before you and before God. I just walked in, and the young man, he started. And Brother Jake, I guess there's enough of devil still in me. I just reached out and laid my hand on his shoulder, and I said, don't you open your mouth. I said, today is your day to shut up. And I said, God help you if you breathe hard. And about that time, he had the man that owned the business walked in. He said, what are you talking to my hired help like that for? I said, I'll talk to you like that. I said, you step outside with me. He started cussing. I said, you come outside with me. He said, what are you talking about? I said, you step outside. And I said, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm talking about. I said, man, you're going to stop something today. I've done business with you for almost two weeks, and I'm through. Have you ever just had enough, Jake? Just had enough. And I said, don't you say one word to me. Don't just, don't you do it. And I said, today ain't your day either. I'm old. Buddy, I can, I, I, I'm big enough and just bad enough. I can finish your time. He said, we're used to talking like this. We're Yankees. I said, I'm a born again child of God. And say, I said, I've been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, I am not listening to this. This is my business. I said, this is my business. Because I'm paying you. James, I, I, I was saying all the time, shouldn't do this. And I said, are you a Christian? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? I said, you forget me? I said, you don't mean, you'll never miss a thing. But I said, you forget the Lord Jesus and you're going to die lost without God. He said, I don't want nothing to do with him. But I said, you got to deal with me right now. And he just laid his other hand on my shoulder. And boy, I was ready for him. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what he said? Preacher, I'm sorry. And I said, I'm sorry too. If I've offended you, I'm sorry, but I'd love for you to know the God I serve. And he started to come out with a a slang word. He said, I'm sorry. I've been back in there for the last two days to check on my automobile, and they ain't four nicer men that God ever created. I went back in there today and I said, man, I'd love for you to come to Mount Carmel Baptist Church. I said, all we'll do is love you. Preacher Jane, I can't save them, but God can. And I went back and I apologized to every one of them. 
And I told them if I offended them in any way, I was sorry. And asked them, I said, I pray God forgive me if I've hurt your feelings. But I don't want you to die lost. I'd love for you to go to church with me. And the last one today, he said, I ain't got time to fool with you. I ain't got time to listen to you. I've got to get back to work. I don't want to hear it. I just don't want to hear it. But the other three and the owner, they took time to hear the word of God. And they never said one bad word. Not even one. The devil, you don't have to walk with the devil. This right here is what I am talking about, just as plain. And I'm not trying to impress on you that I am some big something. I'm not. You don't have to take the devil's trash. You can stand up and God will stand with you. Them men could have stomped me and have cleaned up that place with me. I'm just an old man. But right here is the one, the lamb can fight your battles. And God can take care of you and God will help you if you will take a stand for yourself. And the Bible says here, in this, this 144,000, the lamb was leading. The lamb was leading because he said he looked in verse number one, and I'm not gonna go back and take the time to go back and retread all of this, but he said, I looked. John looked, John was looking with the visible eye here in Revelation 14 and one. He said, I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion. There stood the lamb, all right? But he said here, and Mount Zion is Jerusalem. There's no, no use in trying to relocate this or look for another place because it is and it speaks of it in Psalms, and I've talked about this, uh, because he said, yet have I set my king upon the holy hill in Zion, and that's in Psalm two and six. And we talked about this last week. But the thing about it was, that what, when, when, the, when the three Hebrew children was in trouble, who led them through the fire? The Lamb of God. Okay, the Lamb of God led the 144,000. He led them through the fire. Amen? All right? And then when you're in the fire, God will lead you through the fire. You got, if you are in the right mind and the right mindset, now you go in there and and you go out here in the world and you go out there and try to act like a bully and go out there and try to, try to show off like you're some big something that you're not. Now God let you fall flat of your face and you'll get your brains beat out. Amen. The 144,000, God said that his name was written in their foreheads. All right, but you drop on down and he said uh, in verse number two and three, and he said, I heard a voice from heaven as it was of many waters. All right, I'm not gonna cover all of this again. He said in verse number three, and they sang as it was a new song. Only a Christian can sing a godly song, a new song that will please God. And we covered this last week. All right, so let's, let's move on down a little farther. All right, as, and as we go on down, I want you to look in verse number four. And the Bible says here, and what, it, what he is saying, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. All right, 
Now, he said, to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. All right, and saying with a loud voice. Now, this is where we were at last week, all right, if I'm right. All right, and saying with a loud voice, fear God. How many of us really fear God? If we really fear God, would we do some of the things we do? Is there really a fear of God in the church? All right, but he says, they're going to preach, they're saying, fear God and give glory to Him. Why are we so silent in church? Why are we? Why don't we... Why don't we give God glory? Why don't we praise Him? Why don't we, women as well as men, holler, amen, praise the Lord? Why are we as scared to do it? Boy, we we'll go outside and, boy, our youngin kicks a field goal, or, man, they make some kind of score on a, a physical uh, a sport team of some sort, and brother, you're gonna come out of your seat, you're gonna blow an air horn, you're gonna yell to the top of your voice. But in church, somebody gets saved and, whee, maybe, maybe they ain't a holy grunt. They ain't even a, a stingy grunt. I mean, we're afraid to move in church. You know why? Because a lot of people are taught, shh, shh, shh. You're supposed to be quiet in church. Yet you're supposed to reverence church. But God said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of God say amen. Glory to God, praise his name. Let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Why not wake up and praise the Lord? Well, I'm not supposed to. Who told you that? The devil. The devil told you to keep your mouth shut in church if you're saved. A lost man ain't got nothing to shout about because he's going to hell. He's going to hell. He's going to burn for all eternity and he don't have one solitary thing to be happy about. And listen, I want to show you what I'm talking about. He said, they're saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. All right? His judgment is come. What's he going to judge? Thank God my sins are gone. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah to God. Brother, my righteous, uh, his righteousness was imputed to me and my sins are gone. Why can't we be happy about it? Well, I don't want to show my emotions. My makeup will run. Well, dear God, I don't have none on. Well, you could use some. Well, maybe I could. Fred, I think it'd help us, don't you? I know it would. You got a little in your pocketbook, Pat? <laughs> Jerry, you got some in your pocketbook? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, see, he's honest. He's honest. Okay. So the thing about it is, he said, worship him. Worship him. Why? Because that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. How many of you love a cold drink of water? Well, why not give God glory for a cold drink of water? 
Give God praise for a fountain drink. <laughs> Amen, Donna. Amen. Hallelujah to God. I mean, you like slushies? I do, but not between my toes. Oh, oh. Yeah, think about it. He said, and now, the thing about this thing is, during the age of this gospel, I want you to think of something. At the beginning, now stay with me. At the beginning, of the great tribulation. Men are the messengers of God as the 144,000 reveal it. Amen? Now I'm going somewhere. Might not get there in too big a hurry, but I'm going somewhere. Even two witnesses. Okay, now who were they? They had supernatural power and they stood up against Satan, but were removed from the earth, from the scene, and all of they, who were they? They were men, wasn't they? They were men. Okay. Angels, as well as men, were messengers in the Old Testament, right? Okay. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, the word spoken by angels in Hebrews 2 and 2 were steadfast. Steadfast. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 2 and 2. Okay, the times are so intense during the great that only the angels get messages from God through to the world and they're indestructible. The 144,000, they, the only, they were not indestructible had it not been for the glory of the Lamb. The two witnesses, they were not indestructible. The prophets in the Old Testament were not in, un, indestructible. In our day, the preachers called to preach the Word of God. The true preachers are not indestructible, right? But the angels called during this time period are indestructible because they're called and directed to preach the Word of God by God Almighty. And they're indestructible. Look at the photo. They're going and they're going to preach their crying out. They're saying with a loud voice, fear God and give Him glory to Him. That's what it says in verse number 6. Verse number 7. Give Him glory. And the eternal, eternal gospel, this gospel, the question naturally arises, how is this gospel, since the word gospel do you know what the word gospel means? Huh? Good news. Exactly. That's what it means. Write it in your Bible. That's what it means. The word gospel means good news. That's simply, that's simple. That's a simple explanation. You know, everything in this book, in the 66 books, is really simple if you'll let it be simple. We make it hard. We make it hard by twisting and turning and flipping around and going uh, through all of it. The angel bringing the good news says, yes, the, the news 
is to those who are God's children, but it's, but, now listen to me, but, 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 it's bad news for the unbelievers. Boy, is it bad news for the unbelievers. Now I'll tell you, eternities, it's going to be something else. And there's no second chances. Now, Brother Fred, I mean, you, people think, well, purgatory. And uh, you, you're just going to, you're just going to take and you're going to, you're going to get, you're going to get another shot at this thing. It's not going to happen. Let's look at the next verse. And he says, but before I get there, let me say this. Fear God is the message of this eternal gospel. And this is the message. The writer in the book of Proverbs said that fear God, that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But how many of us really count ourselves wise at any point? Do we really fear God? Do we really fear Him? If we really fear God, why, why is so much thievery, so much theft going on around God's house? So much meanness. Why do we have to lock our doors? Little old t- church where we grew up at. I know y'all don't know where it's at, but my dad's buried there and my grandparents and most, most all the Adams family. I ain't talking about Lurch and all of them. <laughs> but uh, about all of them are buried at South Fork Baptist Church over in Piney Creek next to Virginia, and uh, that's where we was born, right down next to New River, a little regular Baptist church there, and the doors were never locked. When I was over there pastoring, in that neck of the woods, I, I had a burden for that little old church, and I went up there, and I just, I don't know, I just went around it. And I got a hold of their, their what to call their minutes. And you know how many members they had? I can show it to you. They had six. I got a hold of my uncle, and his name's R.G. Adams. He's dead now. My aunt and my, one of my cousins. I got one cousin living, and that's it. That's the end of the Adamses. There's no more boys, except for my brothers, Larry's son, and He's got some, some girls. That's it. No more Adamses. The world's shouting victory. But anyway, I went over there and I called my uncle and I, I said, do you care if we paint the church? And I went back to where I was pastoring and I told him, I said, I'd like to take up next Sunday and I would like to take up enough money to paint South Fork Baptist Church. God just laid it on my heart. And I'd love for you men. Yeah, God, I don't know, Mike. 
Boy, I'll tell you what, we had five-gallon buckets of paint. We had men paint buckets, paint brushes. We painted that whole church in a day, less than, way less than a day. Yeah, God, we had ladders, we had buckets. I still got buckets. Never had a drop of paint in them. Buddy, I mean, we had people showing up, and I mean, we, we had paint, and I mean, there's more paint on people than it was on the walls. <laughs> Brother, I mean, we, we painted that little old church. I mean, it looked like a white beacon standing out in the night. My uncle just stood back and quiet, and just old tears just run down his cheeks. When God's people come together, things can happen. Things can happen. It just, it don't, it, it, one can't do it all. But all can do what needs to be done. Everybody chipping in. And that's, that's what God's people, what he's saying here. He said, the Lord is beginning the wisdom, the effect of the angels saying to God's people, get wise, get smart because you need the fear of God. God saved you by grace, but he is going to judge the earth, and this is God's final call because, the, the, uh, I guess it's God's final call before, before the return of Christ for the judgment. The angels are making this final call. But the thing about it is, in verse number eight, and I, I guess we'll have to quit with verse number eight. But he said here in this, in this chapter, God is bringing us before those who will appear again in the book of Revelation. Here he's bringing here. But he has given us now more or less the program which is going to follow what we've just covered. And he's saying here, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the thing about it is, what he is saying, he said it's Babylon is failed. The second angel, he runs ahead and announces this. And the thing about it, the idolatry that went on of Babylon is a divine intoxication which will fascinate and does fascinate the whole world. Because the thing about it is, what I could never understand for many, many years. Babylon is modern day Iraq. Okay, we all agree on that, right? If you don't, then you will. Okay, but the thing about it is this. Before Saddam Hussein, Iraq had never been touched. It had never, it had been, it was one of the most beautiful cities. And Iraq had one of the greatest and largest vaults, gold vaults, that held as much or more gold as I know. Now you may know more. I'm sure you know more than I know. But working in the banking system, it held more gold than what the United States held because, see, gold backs up currency. Paper money is no good without gold to back up the paper. Saddam had that gold in multi-millions or trillions in that vault. Okay. 
I read and I read this and uh, as it would fascinate me because the thing about it, but this is the reason we're seeing so much experimentation today in the day that we see Satan worship and exorcisms and all of the cults and which are definitely satanic that's going on today is what went on over there before the fall of Iraq. All of that satanic worship came out a lot, 90% of it, or at least 80, come out of the Middle East. And the thing, oh, you, and you go down to New Orleans, and you go down in there. I don't know if any of you ever been down in there much. All the palm reading and all of this year and all the satanic worship and all the throwing of the chicken bones and all of this year stuff and all, all this mess that's going on. And the thing about it was, but Babylon stood great. But how could this fulfill and it said Babylon is fallen. Babylon, it said here, and there, it said Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made the nations drink the wine of her wrath and their fornication. How could she fall if she had never fallen? But she's fallen now, ain't she? God brought her down. but she has to be rebuilt. And she's going to be rebuilt. But she's going to come down again. It's going to be brought to naught. And buddy, when it's brought down the next time, it'll be a nuclear disaster. It will melt. It will fall. And if you've ever seen a nuclear bomb hit, nuclear, um, nuclear nerve gas, when it hits, you'll melt while you're still on your feet. Folks, nuclear warfare, nerve gas, all of this this is, this is nothing to laugh at. I'll tell you, any kind of nuclear warfare is pitiful. It's pitiful. We were shown pictures of it. We went through some of that when we were in training. And, and I'll tell you right now, when I went to law school, and I'll tell you now, Folks, it's a pitiful way to die. You will melt in your shoes from your head to your feet while you stand. Nuclear warfare. And this, think about it, hell is an awful place, but hell, you will never die. You will never burn up. And the thing about it is this. It says in Jeremiah, I told you, I would be going there. But I told you 25, but I won't be going there tonight. It'll be in 51. In 51, let me read this to you real quickly. It says, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. This is Babylon, uh, Jeremiah 51, 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Now, if you can get away far enough and look back at the earth, I am of an opinion 
that you would be disappointed in mankind and the nations of the world if you could see what Babylon has done to this world. God said Babylon hath made the world mad. That's what Jeremiah said under God's direction. Let us stand. Heavenly Father and Almighty God as we stand together this evening. Lord, help us, God, Miss Hale. Lord, if there are one or more here in this room tonight, Lord, that don't know Jesus in the free pardon of sin. Lord, please don't let them leave this room. Don't let them leave this building tonight lost without God. Lord, hell is an awful place. Eternity is a long time. God is too long to be wrong. God, I pray tonight, Lord Jesus, God, help us. Lord, dear God, help us. God, to see eternity with an open eye. God, I pray tonight, Lord. God, help us, Lord, to receive you while there is time. Accept you as our Lord and Master. The blood of Christ is the only thing that will stand between heaven and hell tonight. Lord Jesus, without the blood, we're going to die lost. With your blood, God, upon our lives, Lord, thank God our sins are gone. Lord, I praise you for your love and your mercy. Go with us to our home. Bind up the brokenhearted, save the lost, and Lord, those men that we've talked to this week, the four God mechanics and God the owner of that building, of that place of business. Oh, dear God, let me speak to them. God, speak to their hearts even now, Lord. God, help me walk in there in love and understanding. And God, may you bring them to the knowledge of the truth before it's too late. In Jesus' name, amen.